Hey guys, welcome back. It's Shelby and we are in the kitchen today because I am going to be making a strawberry shortcake birthday cake. So basically just a normal strawberry shortcake but frosting all the sides with the whipped cream. I'm putting in some candles on top. So basically just trying to make it fun and festive and cute. And while I've like kind of cobbled together strawberry shortcakes in the past, I've never like truly made an authentic one. I usually just use like puff pastry and then uh, whipped cream and strawberries, but I thought I would go all in today. And to do that, I looked up basic strawberry shortcake recipes. Most of them differed on what you could use for your cake base. Some said biscuits, some said um, sponge cake, some had other suggestions. So I went on the hunt for a sponge cake recipe and I found one that I think I like that I wanna try. And it's from Natasha's Kitchen. I'm gonna link it down below. Her blog makes it look like it would be really easy to make. I'm gonna try to make it. I don't quite have everything that she says you're gonna need. For example, you need two either eight by eight or nine by nine metal cake pans, and I don't have those. What I do have are little glass pie pans, so I'm gonna be using these. Also, she says uh, to line the bottom of your pans with parchment paper and don't grease the sides, but I don't have parchment paper. And I have a vague memory of my grandmother buttering and flouring her pans when I baked with her. So that's what I did. It may or may not work because not only did she not say to grease and flour your pan, she specifically said to not do it and to just use the parchment papers and to leave the sides of the pans alone. But I did it anyway because I don't have parchment paper. So. We're using the wrong type of pan and it's prepared the wrong way. So we're off to a great start. Otherwise, the rest of the recipe seems fairly easy. It's four ingredients. It's eggs, flour, sugar, and baking powder, I believe. Lots of eggs, like six eggs, and they have to be room temperature, which again, I didn't read. So I just put them in a bowl full of like warm but not hot water and I hope I'm not cooking them. I hope I'm just like heating them up to room temperature. So basically this recipe is off to a great start, obviously. And uh, whatever, we're just gonna get into it. I'm going to follow her instructions as closely as possible. If it doesn't work out, I can't blame her really because I'm already doing things wrong. So we're gonna try that. That is going to be the sponge cake base. And then I'm going to make like a homemade whipped cream. I know, fancy, right? And uh, all of the recipes online are the same for that. Like they're literally just heavy whipping cream, powdered sugar and vanilla extracts. So I'm not gonna like link any recipes there because you know, I went through a bunch of different recipes to find the one I wanna use and they're all literally the same. So whatever, just a whipped cream recipe, like a homemade whipped cream recipe, and then uh, some strawberries cut up and we are going to frost it and hopefully it's gonna turn out fabulously and super cute, but uh, we'll find out. Okay, so the oven is preheated to 350 degrees. I've got my eggs and those are where you start. So six eggs beaten on high for one minute. So I'm just cracking my eggs one at a time into the beater and getting rid of the shells. And then I'm going to turn it up on high so they can start uh, whipping. So once your eggs are nice and whipped for the amount of time, you're going to gradually add one cup of granulated sugar, just a little bit at a time and keep whipping them. And then it's time for your flour and baking powder. So you add the cup of flour into a bowl with the baking powder and whisk it together before you add it to your eggs. Okay. This is the maximum allowed whipping speed. So we're gonna go with this. And it doesn't last 10 seconds, but you know what? On her video, it didn't either. So we're gonna, oh no, we're gonna go with that. We're gonna get this out of here after I make a mess of it. Okay. That's good, that's good. It's literally just eggs and sugar, so I can't even try it to see if it's good because it's not going to be good. But I have my baking powder and flour mixture whisked in here, and you do it in thirds through a sifter. So I'm just going to pour about a third of it in. Sift it in like she does, like a real baking pro right here. And then fold it in with hopefully more luck than the good fairies had for Aurora's birthday. Here we go. Making sure to scrape the bottom of the pans, as she said. So the eggs are already super light and airy and basically the consistency of the cake, I'm assuming, and the flour, I'm guessing you just want to kind of mix in to give them something to grab hold of. 
without actually changing the consistency too much. That's my guess, my very non-professional, non-even amateur level baking guess. There we go. It is pretty to sift things though. Until you like tap it and it goes flying, but whatever. So she says after you fold it in, you should put it in the oven right away. Don't let it sit. So I'm going to do some scrapes. She says scrape the bottom. When there's no flour left in the bowl, you do one or two more. So I still see some flour. But it's getting close. So she says two to three more after you see no flour. I see no flour, so one two, three, I think that's it. Whoops, very professional. Okay, here we go. My very misprepared pie plates in lack of well-prepared cake plates. And I do the batter evenly between them. Oh, a little pocket of flour, that's not good. I feel like it looks like fluffy pancake batter. It gets very different than any, oh no, the pocket of flour. That's going to throw off all of it. Why? Why did I do it so badly? And because I floured the tins, I can't put the batter back in it. All right, we're going to have a very floury second half to this cake. Oh, I was doing so well with this too. Did you guys notice that? Like I was doing really well. And that is a different, thicker consistency. So I'm just gonna try and mix it a little bit. I know this is like horrible and not at all what you do, but whatever. I discovered the flour too late and this is what I have to do. You do what you gotta do. Again, if this doesn't work out, I in no way blame Natasha because I am just butchering this. She made it look super easy and delicious, which is what had me interested in trying it to begin with. Here we go. Those look about even. So now they go into the oven, 350 degrees on the center rack, for I'm pretty sure 23 to 28 minutes. So while that's cooking, I'm going to clean up first of all and then get the strawberries out chopped and with some sugar added to them just in a bowl back in the fridge so that I don't have to do that later because chopping strawberries always takes longer than you think it will. Second, or I guess third off on the list uh, is that I just wanted to mention that when I preheated the oven, I also moved the rack down to the center because you're supposed to bake it in the center of the oven. And for once, I read the instructions beforehand and prepared. So um, given how messed up this cake recipe is already turning out, I want bonus points for, for following directions on that one. Anyway, the cakes are baking for 23 to 28 minutes and um, yeah, now let's chop some strawberries and prep the rest of the ingredients. So how I like to do it is to slice up your strawberries, add a layer of those, and then sprinkle some sugar on top, a few more strawberries, little more sugar, a few more strawberries, and a little more sugar until you've used up all your strawberries. This ensures that they are all evenly coated and lovely and sweet. Wow. Look at that though. That looks gorgeous. I did a good job. All right, we're gonna do a little close up on these. They just came out of the oven. They're still too hot to grab to pull out of the pans. I know I'm supposed to do that pretty quickly. Honestly, I'm already impressed. Like, I don't know what's going to taste like. There was no flavoring, just like egg, sugar, flour, and baking soda, baking powder. It was baking powder, but um, no vanilla or anything. I am going to be loading them up with strawberries, so I'm not super worried about the flavor, but they're basically flat on top, too. This one's slightly domed. I didn't get them perfectly even in the pans. This one definitely has like a smidge more and it rose more. I think this one ended up with more of the reintroduced flour batter on top. So I think that might be why it's a little denser, but these are quite possibly the most perfect looking cakes I have ever baked. So good news and bad news. This one actually came out of the pan pretty easy when I scraped it with the spatula. This one also fits on the tray, which is the good news. The bad news is, is when I flipped my baking mac over to flip it, 
the vast majority of the beautiful topping stayed on the mat, but also good news, it lets me eat it, and um, that's gonna be covered up with strawberries and cream anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, and here are the cakes, how they turned out. They're still a little bit warm. This one, I don't feel like it's fair to say sunk at all because I ripped the top of it off. So I also ripped the bottom of it off putting it on there. So it didn't sink, it's just like it was flat and then I domed it and it's gonna settle down to lowest point. So I really don't think it sunk. This one didn't sink at all. I mean, I could definitely push my finger through here. It kind of feels like a slightly more dense angel food cake. I don't know, I've never like made a sponge cake before so I don't know what the consistency is supposed to be. But honestly, I'm really quite happy with these. I'm happy with the way they look and their consistency. Next up, we are making the whipped cream, or maybe I should cut these into layers first. I think I'll cut these into layers first and then make the whipped cream, and then we'll assemble it. So the blog I got the recipe from suggested using a big serrated knife to make the cakes into layers. So I used a bread knife and sawed through them horizontally. They need a little bit of help, but it worked well overall, and they are lovely layers. Figure I'll put the transfer on camera just so you guys can see how it goes. Um, this is a really great top piece, and I think I want the two, because the pie plates, you know, taper in. I think I want the smaller ones in the center and the larger ones on the bottom. Since this one is a really nice top, I'll keep that for the top, and I'm attempting this one to transfer. Oh, wow, that worked beautifully. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Takes up my whole little serving tray here, but that's fine. And, um... That's, that's not an even cut whatsoever, but whatever I tried. Um, here's some extra here, we'll just put that right there. Perfect. And uh, yeah, let's start making the filling. So I've got my sugar, I've got my heavy whipping cream. This says it is a quart, so four cups. I wanna make as much as I can, so I'm gonna make the whole thing and just uh, make four times the recipe. On the back, it tells you how to do it. I'm also going to be adding two tablespoons of sugar for each cup, so eight and half of a teaspoon of vanilla extract for each cup, so two teaspoons of vanilla and whipping it all together in a super chilly bowl from the freezer that's been chilling in there since I made the cake. So my only advice as far as contribution for making whipped cream is to put your whisk and bowl in the freezer for like 20 minutes, half an hour beforehand. Basically, as soon as you finish making the cake, wash it and put it in there. It's got to be nice and cold, and then you just dump all your ingredients in at the same time and mix it, and uh, that's basically it. It splatters, but otherwise, no further advice. Like, it's pretty easy. Okay, so everything is done and baked and prepped, and now we just have to assemble it and make it gorgeous. I've got everything here. I'm going to change the camera angle, and we're going to make a lovely cake. So I don't actually know if I have enough whipped cream to do this. The idea is to do all the different layers, the top and the sides. But if I don't have enough, I'll just layer it up on top and like kind of scrape the sides and make it like a naked cake. Uh, not the intention or the goal, but you know, we'll be adaptable if we need to be. So layering the cake itself is super simple. You just put one of your layers of cake down and then you load it up with strawberries. Try to make it like nice and flat and horizontal and then you load your whipped cream on top of it. Just kind of watch how much you do because you gotta do several layers and hopefully frost the whole cake with it. Next up, another layer. You can see mine's doming a little bit, so I'm trying to be careful with the strawberries. It's super tempting just to build it up in the center, but then it's gonna droop on the outside edges and not hold its form. So uh, just be careful. Uh, you can see that I'm trying to be careful with it, but at the end of the day, it's a cake. Like It's gonna be delicious, so don't worry too much about it. Uh, pour the extra juice in there. This cake actually can take it, which is really nice. Last little bit of cream, and then we are going to top it off and get frosting. So it is actually a lovely kind of squared off cylinder shape, which is great. I'm dumping all the whipped cream on top, and I have enough to frost the edges, it looks like. So I'm going to pour the rest of it on top. And then just kind of smush it down and mash it down the sides and then try to smooth it as I go. Mainly, I just need to make sure that it's on top and lovely in that way. It makes kind of a mess, but that's okay, honestly. And this cake actually refrigerates really well. So um, just because it is whipped cream, I would either serve it right away or, you know, relatively soon to when you made it and then pop it in the fridge right away. Once it's done, just wipe the edges of the plate with a paper towel to get it nice and clean. Wipe down your countertop and then find your best looking strawberries to kind of decorate the top with. And you have a gorgeous cake. Look at that. Wow, that turned out beautiful. And honestly, the 
whipped cream frosting is not melting all over the place the way I was really worried it would. That's a four layer cake, you guys. I'm like super impressed with myself. If I bake cakes, it's generally in the sheet cake form or that one cake decorating video that you guys saw me do for my friend. That was super delicious, but as far as decorating goes, kind of a fail. But this is quite pretty, I like this.